Liberté 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 Ça vous a plu le discours de Fabien Hart On est toujours très content et très honoré de permettre, de vous permettre d'entendre des nouveaux intervenants. Nous en avons un autre. Encore une semaine chargée en manifestations. Après de grosses mobilisations en France, d'autres pays sont sortis dans les rues, comme l'Italie. Ils manifestent contre le pass politique et le bouillon obligatoire. Vous pouvez voir sur ces images la Piazza del Popolo à Roma. Manifestation qui a fini par dégénérer. Sur ces images, vous pouvez voir des manifestants dresser des barricades et des images de la milice réprimant des manifestants. L'Allemagne a également vu ses rues occupées par des manifestants ainsi que la Suisse. Pour les mêmes raisons, pas, c'est souplette, hein, on change pas la recette. Le 9 octobre, au soir, pour la 11e semaine consécutive, les manifestants sont descendus dans les rues de Tel Aviv. <rire> Ça ressemblait plutôt à l'accent allemand, là. <rire> N'importe quoi. Plus tôt dans la semaine, le 8 octobre, une manifestation s'est déroulée à Strasbourg. À rien <rire> contre les passes politiques et le bouillon on va encore me dire, eh, faut pas rigoler sur ces sujets-là, hein. oh, faut être sérieux, sérieux. Excusez-moi, moi j'aime bien rire. Le 7 octobre matin, plusieurs manifestants en Guyane ont bloqué l'entrée du grand port maritime pour protester contre le bouillon obligatoire et le pass. À 6h du matin, des manifestants protestaient contre les mêmes raisons ainsi que l'augmentation du coût de la vie. Ils ont bloqué l'entrée poids lourd d'un parking au niveau du port de dégrade des cannes. Ils ont mis des barrages, les cannes ne peuvent pas passer, donc euh, faire leur bord. Voilà. Toujours le 7 octobre, au soir, des manifestants à Berne furent violemment réprimés par les chiens de garde de l'État. Ils ont utilisé des balles en caoutchouc et des canons à eau contre les manifestants. Et enfin, des images provenant des United States. À New York, des manifestants s'en sont pris à un point de test 19. Et à Los Angeles, des personnes contre le bouillon et le papier facial manifestent chaque semaine. Shifting our focus to Rome, Italy, thousands of demonstrators, including members of far-right groups, took to the streets of the Italian capital on Saturday to protest against government's extension of COVID health pass system to all workplaces. Demonstrators clashed with riot police near the Italian parliament to denounce government's latest measures. Police used water cannons and tear gas to disperse the mob, while several protesters are later detained following the clashes. One group of protesters tried to break through police lines to reach Prime Minister Mario Draghi's city centre office, while a separate group tried to smash their way into the headquarters of Italy's main trade union office. The certification in Italy, known as a Green Pass, takes effect on October 15 and applies to public and private workplaces. The measures are the first by a major European economy requiring proof of vaccination or a recent negative virus test for all categories of workers. Pur facendo questo obbliga i cittadini a vaccinarsi per ottenere un lascia passare per poter accedere al proprio lavoro. Quindi è un ricatto una natura criminale e vigliacca da parte delle istituzioni ai più alti livelli, a mio avviso. Italian ministers have backed the measures, calling it a necessary step to avoid further lockdowns and to revive the economy. According to them, the measures are aimed to at reinforcing Italy's economic recovery with GDP forecast to grow 6%. Globalization which means a globalization not led just by governments, 
but where our solutions are elaborated jointly by all stakeholders.
Well, anti-vaccination demonstrators have started turning on each other after only a small group attended today's rally. Police took just minutes to make several arrests and shut down their poorly organised plan. Maggie Rayworth was there. A handcuffed protester argues his rights with police. You're not the protest, right? Where, where's that in the show? When did he say that? Officers wasted no time making arrests. Within minutes, this short-lived demonstration in Glen Waverley was shut down. They have nothing on them, just on the side of the road. Demonstrators are dwindling. This morning, they were well outnumbered by police. There were two protest locations, one in the city's east, while another group rallied simultaneously in Epping. But that's not one of the approved reasons to be out of the house. In encrypted messages, protesters were urged to report police sightings. These people are against mandatory vaccination and lockdowns. I don't feel like parents should be forced to put their kids in this position. This one is an experiment. It hasn't even been found if it's safe. Mandatory vaccinations are against the Australian Constitution. There must be informed consent. The group gathered at busy intersections and held signs. This man says he's out of work because he's refusing to be vaccinated. Still don't have a job. Still don't have no money. How am I meant to get money? We know from past demonstrations it's protests like these where the virus is transmitted. For largely unvaccinated crowds like this one, it's dangerous and it's likely people here will get sick. If you don't really care about yourself, um, Think about what might happen if you get sick and you pass it on to someone you love uh, or someone you care about. Weak numbers caused protesters to turn on each other. In secret messages, leaders of the poorly organised rally labelled the group spineless, while members called each other brain dead, moronic and delusional, a sign the loud minority <laughs> will be quieter from here. Maggie Rayworth, Nine News. Ceux qui ne sont pas vaccinés sont devenus des parias, même pire, ils perdent leur emploi, ils perdent leur, leur dignité. On n'a plus, plus le droit au loisir, plus le droit à la culture, plus le droit à ça. Donc on divise les Français, c'est gravissime, c'est du jamais vu.
An unofficial Australia Day on the streets of New York City, but this is no celebration. Massing outside the Australian consulate just two weeks after Prime Minister Scott Morrison was there. Our mates down under right now, we're in a lot of trouble. A mixture of teachers, frontline health workers and activists. We stand in absolute solidarity with the people of Australia. Not anti-vaxxers, they say, but anti-compulsory vaccinations in the US and here. We're here for the Australian people that are getting locked up and hit with rubber bullets. That referencing police dispersing so-called freedom protesters at Melbourne's Shrine of Remembrance. No one's free to put somebody else in hospital. Questions reaching the White House. Does President Biden support what the Australian government is doing in their country? We'll continue to abide by and conduct our own policies. And with America's COVID death toll now above 700,000 and more people dying in a single day than Australia's total over 18 months, it's clear Australia will keep pursuing its own policies too. Uh, basically digging mass graves, mass graves on islands in New York to bury people who are dying and they're stacking them in freezer trucks outside hospitals, telling us how to conduct ourselves? I mean, seriously? Mark Riley, 7 News.